until after the presidential election. I will have more latitude after my election. I will transmit to Vladimir. Look out, gang. I hope you love surprises. Oh, I hope it's just as fun, that surprise, as when Nancy Pelosi told us to pass health care so we could find out what's in it, what's inside. We have an update on that. But first, let me go to the other one. Let me go to the Secret Service with hookers. Do you remember? Okay, lie number one, Libya. The other one, Secret Service. You remember what I said? I said, there's something wrong here. How come the military is involved and the Secret Service, but no one in the White House is involved? Oh, yeah. Back in April, the administration said no White House staffers were involved in the hooker scandal whatsoever. Today, report, probe of Secret Service prostitution scandal, scandal may implicate White House staffers. You bet they were there. You bet they were sleeping with hookers as well. The Secret Service and military are breaking ranks to get this report out because the White House is pressuring the IG's office to keep this quiet until after the election. Transmit it to Vladimir. It may involve people that the president works with on a daily basis, but this president is squelching it. And what is, what, why, are they, why are they breaking ranks? Why are they breaking their silence? Because they are tired of the president throwing people under the bus to make him look good. First, it was tonsils. Doctors cutting tonsils out for cash. Um, when his friend was arrested, the police acted stupidly. I have no information, but that was the police fault. Then it was the Chamber of Commerce. It's some foreign advertising thing. We don't really know if we can trust them. He attacked Gallup when the polls looked bad. He said, they're just six-year-olds with crayons. The Supreme Court, he shamed them at the State of the Union address. He said, quote, I'm going to put my boot on the throat of the oil executives. Wall Street fat cats, Arizona immigration. Remember, it's the police fault. When you're eating ice cream, they're going to come in and take your grandparents away. Even when it comes to the security and safety of our own soldiers, when Fort Hood happened, he threw common sense under the bus so he could protect a Muslim extremist. When Solyndra went belly up just after, Obama gave them $500 million in taxpayer money. Obama said this. Obviously, we wish Solyndra hadn't gone bankrupt. Part of the reason they did was because the Chinese were subsidizing their solar industry and flooding the market in ways that Solyndra couldn't compete. But understand, uh, this was not our program per se. Per se. Really? It was part of the 2009 stimulus package, and he bragged about it in the 2010 State of the Union speech. Watch again. You can see the results of last year's investments in clean energy, in the North Carolina company that will create 1,200 jobs nationwide helping to make advanced batteries, or in the California business that will put 1,000 people to work making solar panels. Really? Currently, there are zero people working there, per se. Keystone. When the popular Keystone oil pipeline fell through, first Obama blamed it on the Republicans. He said, eh, they want me to make a decision, a hasty decision, too fast. I need time to study it first. But see, what they didn't tell you, what the media never covered, is that it had been studied for three years and had been okayed by the EPA. Then, after he stopped the construction and started getting dicey, he had the nerve to take credit for the lower half of the pipeline that didn't even require presidential approval. He, they didn't need him to build that. They were building it anyway. And he said, well, I've approved that now. Well, good, but can I ask you, Mr. President, what good is it to build a half of a pipeline? It's not connected to anything. Why would you brag about building half of a pipeline? Ugh. How about the auto bailout for GM? Remember, with GM, the lie is, is that he saved the auto industry, saving over a million jobs. First of all, and I know this because I remember, because I hated George W. Bush for doing it, it wasn't Obama that bailed him out. It was George W. Bush. And just like I said when George W. Bush was doing it, it won't work. It hasn't. GM isn't saved. The stocks have plummeted 28% since 2010. The executives there now are begging to get out of this government grasp. But Obama says, oh, no, 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 no. But then another lie on top of it. All summer long, he's been saying, you know what? We saved GM and they're number one. 
Well, that was right for about 45 days. They did jump back to number one. But why? Was it because of Obama or the bailout or anything like that? No, nope. very short period of time. What else happened? Oh, I remember Japan was wiped out by a tsunami. They closed all of their plants because of the tsunami. They couldn't build anything. That's why GM rocketed to the top. As soon as they opened those doors of those plants again, GM plummeted. My gosh, when will the lies stop? How about Fast and Furious? Obama denied any knowledge of guns, guns walking, what? I don't know anything about it. But then he used executive privilege to keep them from being seen by the public and the media. Now, executive privilege can only be used if the president was directly involved in the correspondence. So that leaves you with two lies, well, choice. Either Obama and his most senior advisors were involved in the managing of this operation, Fast and Furious, and the fallout from it, or two, Obama is using executive privilege and lying about it because you can't, he doesn't have the authority to use it unless he was involved. Which is it, Mr. President? Obamacare. Obamacare. This one is only going to get much, much worse. The administration sold this to America based on this statement. Add it all up. And the plan I'm proposing will cost around $900 billion over 10 years. $900 billion over 10 years. Nancy Pelosi promised us if we pack it, we'd get it, package it and take it, we'd get a nice present inside. Well, here's your present, America, a big fat invoice. It will now cost $2.6 trillion. That's three times bigger, more than three times bigger than the original estimate. It's the gift that keeps on giving every time it gets more out of control. But that's not all. Yesterday, we found out that the CBO says 6 million, mainly middle-class families, will pay more in Obamacare taxes. 2 million people more than previously thought. Surprise! Then there's the shovel-ready jobs. I love the shovel-ready jobs. He promised us in 2008, he said they're everywhere. Watch. We've got shovel-ready projects all across the country. Do we now? He got the stimulus he asked for, and America got stuck with the bill and nothing else. Okay, fine. I mean, some turtles got some ex extra bridges to cross in Florida. That's something, I guess. Finally, the president said, okay, okay, they weren't really shovel-ready projects. We were wrong. How about the debt and the deficit? He promised us that he would cut the deficit in half by the end of the first term to $650 billion. Remember that one? And that's why today I'm pledging to cut the deficit we inherited by half by the end of my first term in office. He promised that he would get a scalpel in there and he'd precisely get around those programs. The current record deficit is $1.3 trillion. In 2009, he said he was going to control spending. Watch. He's taking responsibility right now in this administration for getting our spending under control under control. He has accumulated more debt than all of the other presidents. $5.4 trillion. That's more than any other president or collection of presidents in the nation's history. $5.4 trillion in four years. That's one third of all of our deficit. 236 years and him one third. Perhaps this is happening because he doesn't even know how to look at a debt counter. Watch this from Letterman. Do you remember what that number was? Well, was it 10 trillion? Was it no, that? I don't remember what the number was precisely. Right. But we don't have to worry about it I'll short help you term. Out. Really? We don't? I'll have to help him out. It wasn't 10 trillion dollars. Here it is. 16 trillion dollars. He's responsible from 10 to 16. But we won't want to cover that one. How about um, he can't help the gas price? In 2008, he was all over television, and the media was there blaming Bush for gas prices. But gas now is 107% more than it was when he got into office. Nearly $4 a gallon, and he says this. You know that we can't just drill our way to lower gas prices. There are no quick fixes or silver bullets. If somebody tells you there are, they're not telling you the truth. Well, he would know about people not telling you the truth. 
There is not enough time, uh, air time on this entire network to list all the things the media should be pressing Obama on. It is clearly an agenda.